Good morning. Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel, Claire's Itchy Feet. I'm Claire and in this travel vlog, I'm going to be exploring the historic city of Chester in the United Kingdom with my family, baby Charlie and my husband, Carlos. We are visiting the boat museum. <laughs> I actually grew up close to Elmsmere Port and remember coming here as a child with my primary school. I remember it being a very interactive museum which is why I wanted to come back here and that really hasn't changed. It's a great place to come for the whole family which is why I wanted to include it in this vlog. The easiest way to get here is definitely by road, there's a big car park that has free parking. But you could even come here by boat, they have visitor moorings available. You can take the train to Elmsmere Port station, it's just a 15 minute walk or you can even ride your bike down along the canal path. What are you doing, love? Breaking the ice. <laughs> I would totally try myself, but Charlie's asleep on me, so that's not. So it's really very quiet here today, actually. The weather isn't the best, and we are here on a Tuesday morning. Um, probably the best time to come if you want a bit more action, especially if you've got children here with the family, would be to come on a Sunday. Um, they have a lot of activities on, they have people in costume, um, and it's just a bit more lively, especially if you have the children. I think they might be a little bit bored during the week. So this exhibit is very interesting. This is Potter's Row, and you've got basically four houses here, and it goes from the oldest, which is down at the bottom here, to the newest, which is at the other end and it kind of goes through the ages and shows you how the people who used to work these canals, especially this dock here in Elmsley Port, how they actually used to live. We have just arrived at Hotel Indigo in Chester, which is where we're staying for the night. I'm a big fan of Hotel Indigo's. This is the third one that we've stayed at now. Okay, so some of the things that are very common with Hotel Indigo's, which makes them the perfect place to stay when you're visiting any city um, in the UK. The location, they're all so central. It's very close to the train station. Um, if you are coming by public transport, it's right in the city centre. We're directly opposite Grosvenor Park, which is a big park here. If you are traveling by car, there is no parking here, um, but they do have an affiliation with a local car park. And if you make sure that you park in there, it's about a seven minute walk from the car park. They will validate your ticket. So it only costs 12 pounds for 24 hours parking. The hotels are really nice. They have fantastic restaurants. We're gonna be eating in the restaurant this evening and well we haven't seen our room yet we're still waiting however we are sitting here having a nice cup of tea in the lovely lounge i'm a big fan of the hotel indigo brand it's actually become my go-to boutique hotel chain while i'm in the uk i love the central locations they're always super family friendly and in every room the cot's been set up for charlie before we even arrive and they of course have a mini fridge and a kettle to heat up water which are essential items when you have a baby Charlie! Hi! The ones we visited also have out of this world restaurants, but I'll give you more on that later. And each one is designed to bring in elements of the area it's located. This makes the room super fun and special. As you can see, this room in Chester has a horse racing theme, which pays homage to Chester's history of horse racing. The attention to detail and the design elements really are what elevates the whole experience of staying in the Hotel Indicos for me. And the bathrooms. Oh my gosh, the bathrooms are always so well designed and they have the best quality soaps and shampoos. Okay, 
so this is our famous cocktail trolley that we have. I can make up every kind of different types of cocktails. I can do a dark and stormy, which I'll use the best thing for. Our gin of the week is our three wrens, and it's our citrus one, which goes really well, um, just kind of with the weather and stuff in the summer. I've got a Tommy's margarita, and then I can also do a rhubarb for 75. So Carlos hasn't drank for a week, and he's about to order a drink. He's been persuaded by the cocktail trolley. Wow. Nice. <laughs> Good. So this is actually the third Mike Robinson restaurant that we've been to now. And they all have like a similar kind of theme, but also very different. So here at The Forge, they have the same kind of open kitchen concept. So everything's cooked on the open fire. But um, they also have uh, deer and venison fish that's caught by Cornish fishermen on day boats. All the same sustainable things. But here the real speciality is, hi Charlie, is the steak. So they have aged steaks here and you get to choose it from the fridge, which is what we're gonna do now. Okay, so the thing to eat here for your main meal is the steak. And they actually have all of the steaks in a fridge that you can choose from. So you can choose the cut, you can choose exactly which piece you get, and you can also choose how you cook it. One of the things that I really, really like is the people. Super friendly, super passionate about the things. Like with the drinks, with the meat and, uh, and the chef, and the, you can tell the whole environment is very passionate. Something that really makes me like. We definitely had the same experience in The Woodsman. That everyone was super friendly, that the chefs were really enthusiastic. The people who seated us, people who took our order, everyone like seemed to really love working here. And I definitely get that from this restaurant too. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> They seem to be very fresh. Gorgeous. <laughs> okay, so I have got venison scotch eggs. So scotch eggs are like an English kind of old-fashioned traditional food that not a lot of people like. I feel like a lot of people like that's like a dirty secret, you know. It's basically a boiled egg with meat around it and then it's breaded um, and maybe fried, I think. This is homemade here in the restaurant I'm very excited to try it. The first thing that you notice is that the egg is cooked perfectly. I'm gonna dig in and it feels nice and crunchy. Honestly, I've never seen a scotch egg like this. And even the barbecue sauce is also homemade. So. You like it? This is like another level. Looks like a lasagna. Very fancy. So this is a ragu of white munchak. Very proper, very English. Very good because I love this and I love this animal. Okay, so I'm gonna try the pate now. It's like got it's like a granola on it. Um, I feel like what they do at these restaurants is they take food that some people kind of turn their nose up at, like a Scotch egg or like chicken liver pate, and they just take it to a whole new level. The consistency, the flavors. The mixture of like the granola and the pate and the raspberry. Just amazing. So the chef has just brought over our food and it looks insane. The steak is actually brought in here about 28 days. Um, and then it's aged in the fridges here for three to four weeks. This is the first time I've ever eaten aged steak, so I'm looking forward to it. First taste. Wow. So, what is your review of the restaurant? 
Well, the, honestly, it's a very good impression. What I really like is the closeness from the kitchen to the table and the environment. The, the people was extremely friendly, uh, especially because we were coming for dinner with the baby. Charlie's teething at the moment and he's only five months, so it's a bit much for him. At one point, one of the members of staff actually came over and took him and helped to kind of calm him down while I was eating my dinner, which I thought was really, really sweet. Like, no one made us feel bad when he was teething a little bit. Um, it was, I felt very comfortable here. What I found with this restaurant and also with the Woodsman where we ate um, last week is that it's not snooty. You know, sometimes you have these like fancy restaurants and you feel like intimidated almost going in there. It doesn't feel like that here. It feels very homely. Like we wanted to leave the restaurant to come and chill out in the bar area to have a dessert just because of the baby and because we just, yeah, it was, it was all a bit much for the baby. Um, so we've come over here and he's gone to sleep and it just, we're, we're like sat here on the couch, chilling out, having a coffee. It's, it feels like a really nice environment. It's a mix of having a boutique experience, but also uh, gather with an amazing cleanliness. The staff is very well prepared. The, 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 the cocktail kitchen. trolley was amazing. The kitchen, like cooking, to be able to see and be so close to the chefs preparing the food. The chef even brought out the food and explained it, which was like... Yeah, it, so it's like, it, it, it's this sensation that you go to a place that they already know. Yeah. This feels very comfortable. He keeps on trying to get into the dessert. We ordered dessert. We're just sharing one and we're having it in the bar and he can't wait any longer. So, go on. The beast tender. <laughs> I'm gonna cry. <laughs> Look like <laughs> mm. Wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Never tasted anything like it. Exactly. Good morning from Chester. It's our first day here and um, we're going to just do a little bit of exploring in the town. Uh, we're going to take a boat trip and we're going on a rather interesting tour. One of the things about Chester is like it's a shopping town. So you can find any kind of shops from English brands and international brands so it makes I think a really interesting journey okay so reasons to visit Chester anything outside of London you're gonna get a huge it's, it's very very different like London is the center of the UK obviously however if you come somewhere like this you're gonna get Tudor architecture everywhere it's full of history Chester so the things that really make Chester stand out the architecture Horse racing, horse racing is huge here. Really big zoo, Roman um, ruins. Right in the center there's a couple of parks where you can visit the Roman ruins. There's a Roman amphitheater here. And just the city center is really, really nice. It's very safe, it's very clean. And all of the shops have this beautiful Tudor architecture. So it's not like anywhere else you're gonna find in the UK. So I've been here many, many, many times growing up in Liverpool, but only ever to shops. So this is like the first time I'm visiting here with my tourist head on, like, like what other things were to do in Chester if you're a tourist other than just go to the shops. Right now we are taking a 30 minute boat cruise um, in Chester. There's a 30 minute and there's a two hour. So we actually made it the perfect timing because as soon as we sat down on here, it started raining. Great British summertime. We're just hoping that it's gonna stop raining before it gets off. And Charlie's also asleep, so I'm kind of stuck inside on the ground floor. <laughs> but it's, it's nice. There's some really beautiful houses over to the left. So top tip, sit on the left side of the boat if you can, um, so you can see all of that. Because on my side, on the right hand side here, it's mostly just 
fails. Hello! Hello! After a boat tour, which in, I think it was impressive because I didn't never thought that they were so wealthy houses. Very, very beautiful. Some of them are modern. Some of them are very cute, small, tiny houses. But all of them enjoy the river. We are going to Grosvenor Park. So right now we're going to walk through the park. We're going to have a look at some of the Roman um, ruins. And then we're going to go through the city centre over to the other side to the canal. Probably stopping off at the cathedral. Apparently this is the oldest church in Chester for more than 900 years. Shortly, your journey into the history of medicine, disease and surgery is going to begin when you venture through these curtains here. And on the other side of these curtains, and I'm sure you can currently hear, is a couple of ancient spirits who will <laughs> converse with you. They will meet you and inform you a little bit about the history of medicine, disease, and surgery. Don't fear them, but do be aware that they are ancient beings, so they do natural on a little bit. I'm sure you probably aware old people can be like that. So now we are in Sick to Death, which is a new newish tour, I think. Um, it should take about 45 minutes to an hour and it's the story of medieval medicine. One day I shall come for you, some of you, sooner. So Charlie, what do you think about Chester? <laughs> I think that means he likes it.